I notice you're green, but I'm not. Okay, it says got it. Do I have to hit got it or got mm -hmm. it? Yes. Okay. All right, we're just giving a few minutes for people to just kind of hop on live. All right. Are we live? I can see us. All right, we're live. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. So, hi, everybody. My name is Van Tratt. I'm the Conservancy Associate for Tina Creek Conservancy. I'm here with Alexa Panticone, who is our Executive Director. Welcome hey, to everyone. our Meet the Eco Artists uh, segment this month. With us today, we have Miss Catherine Eaton Skinner. She is a multimedia artist whose work is centered on the balance of opposites, as well as methods of numerical systems and patterning used to construct an order to our world. And she incorporates paintings, encaustics, sculptures, printmaking, and photography. So we'll begin a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of general background with Ms. Skinner. Um, Ms. Skinner, can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Uh, well, I was... Um raised in Bellevue when it was not Bellevue. You wouldn't even recognize it now, which is across the lake, but um, raised in old growth forest and spent a lot of time uh, outside and went to the, through the school system there and then went to Stanford to study biology because I was going to be a medical illustrator and started uh, illustrating for the department um, in biology at uh, Stanford and went to Hopkins Marine Station, started doing marine uh, environmental drawings and of algae and so on. And so when um, I really started working a couple of years later after college, we moved to, I moved to San Juan Island and um, for 20 years, I did um, marine illustration with pen and ink and so on, um, then started painting. But I didn't, um, we had a farm and uh, three kids, and I had ended up with 50 sheep and did a lot of textiles and did a lot of, uh, uh, finally started doing my own art um, with pen and ink and uh Batiking, did a lot of batiking and so on. Um, but then I started really attending a lot of workshops because it was a way to get off the island and um, get away from my kids for three or four, four days. And my sister is also a painter. So we did that together. Um, so that's pretty much okay. been 57 years. Of, oh, wow. Yeah, that I've that I've actually been, uh, you know, a professional artist. So that's great. Wow. Um, so we know that you're talking to us live right now from your studio in Seattle, but you also have another studio in uh, Santa Fe. Can you tell us kind of what the difference between those two locations two. And, and why you would work between two? Um, well, I didn't, when, when we first bought a place in Santa Fe, I didn't have a studio and my husband would take his laptop and he'd go, well, we're going to stay for two weeks. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And so we had a little studio in the first house and the second house um, actually in Santa Fe built a studio. Mm -hmm. um, so now we pretty much split our time between uh, Santa Fe and Seattle. So we're down there six, six months out of the year and then Seattle six months. So I sort of click into both places. Seattle's very, uh, I'm in the middle of the city on Capitol Hill and um, Santa Fe, I'm out in the country. So the difference between those two, we did do a lot of gardening and all our gardening, organic gardening in Santa Fe and um, you can hike and I have a horse and I go riding and get way up in the hills. So, yeah. That's awesome. Wow. It kind of sounds like the best of both worlds. You know, it, you live one in the city, it, one kind of rural. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty wonderful. It also makes me finish things because I have the deadlines of, oh my God, I'm going to leave and go back to Seattle. And so I'm going to finish what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, so it does give me deadlines that way. 
<laughs> That's great. So moving on, you know, what inspires you to become the artist you are today? Or is there a person that inspired you to become the artist you are today? Um, I think um, probably the most, when I was at Stanford, I studied with Nathan Oliveira. He was a um, painter. He's not with us anymore. But then later, I also took a two week workshop with him. And uh, he was a man of few words, uh, but painted continually. And he said, you have to show up. You, uh, you have to be there for things to happen. And um, I'm not, I usually have multiple things going in my studio. So um, I don't sit around on my stool very much and think about what I should be doing. I, usually that happens in the middle of the night. Um, we just had a question actually come in um, from the audience. I'm gonna hop back to the question about your studio locations. Um, which ones do you find more inspiring or is there something different at each um, I think, well, I write all my poetry in Santa Fe, do most of the writing there because um, it's quiet. Um, mm -hmm. My studio in Seattle is um, on the second floor of a building. And um, so it's pretty quiet here, but I have the energy of the city mm -hmm. around me. Um, the studio in Santa Fe, I, I love because I can walk out the door and it's right there. Um, mm -hmm. So I get to actually, I tend to go to work about noon and I usually work till five or six every day, except when oh. maybe one day on the weekend I don't. So. <laughs> nice. Um, so kind of switching topics, what, in, what does being an eco artist like mean to you? What does that term eco artist kind of represent? Um, well, I never called myself that before. <laughs> I, I tend not, people say what, you know, immediately when you say you're, you're an artist, they want to put a label on you and I'm right. not I'm not very good at labels. I've been fortunate enough and had enough years that I work in lots of different mediums and mm. I um, am very exploratory and okay. will let things go. Um, but because from an early age, you know, at Mount Rainier or up on the San Juans or where we live now, I've always been observant. Mm. Um, when I'm outside. So I haven't, I haven't done a lot of projects that are out in, in nature, so to speak. It's like being observant and bringing it all back. But um, okay. Santa Fe, I've done some projects where um, I'm bringing a lot of objects and things in from the outside because we're walking all the time, working, working with those, yeah. Hmm. So going more into art specific questions, you know, what inspires your art pieces and why? Um, well, obviously birds. <laughs> I've been working, <laughs> I've been working on, cause on the San Juan Islands, we had owls nesting and ravens right there. And Ooh. that's how I really, the ravens became um, sort of a part of what I do, especially the last couple of years. And I'm like, what? I think COVID has made people have to go outside mm. where they wouldn't normally you know in order to get out of their house. They have gone for walks. And I think people are much more interested in what's going on outside at this point and seeing things. Um, that doesn't really answer your question. <laughs> um, but um, it's just that I've always had that connection in what I've done, I think, uh, as a child and then uh, being an illustrator, it allowed you, it made you see. Mm. I mean, in when I was illustrating marine um, animals, I I pretty much said, okay, I I don't want to just draw these like a photograph, separated from everything else. I started drawing the whole ecosystem together, um, where things are living, how the what kind of plants or algae is around, what people what what the animals are in and so on so um yeah. 
I mean, personally, for me, in the beginnings of lockdown, you know, I also wanted to go outside, have an excuse to go outside and walk around. And I got involved in um, birding myself, you know, yeah. going outside, yeah. looking to see, you know, what type of birds, what type of species of birds are around me. Um, would you say that ravens are your favorite bird? I know they're very smart. I, yes, I would. <laughs> and, and crows. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, we, on the, you know, and we have magpies. Too. Oh wow! A lot more magpies in Santa Fe than here, but um, on San Juan Island we had. Um, I mean, I can still go to San Juan Island, and the raven will come and say hello. It's, oh, wow. uh, and the owls nested right around us. But I think they just—they're um, very, very smart, and um, they have a whole community of people that communicate with them. Mm. Um, and so uh, I just started drawing them a long time ago and they weren't really a part of what I was, some of the works in my uh, series that I've done over time, but I did this um, bird screen, which is that shared? Is this shared? Yes, your screen yes. is shared. Uh, and it was in a uh, California museum at the Wildling for three months. And so all of a sudden, everybody wants birds. <laughs> so I have a, um, well, you can see the, ra the ravens I'm working behind. Ravens, it's very hard if you're grouping them to be able to tell between a raven and a crow. It's very, mm -hmm. very only, it's a diff difference in the tail and difference in the beak and the size, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a raven. I just know they're much more massive than a they're usual really big. Crow. <laughs> Yeah, they're very big. And even in Santa Fe, um, we the only time you really see them if you go higher in the mountains than what we are. And mm -hmm. uh, and then you can just sort of go, <laughs> they're so big. <laughs> um, but it's sort of fun on Facebook. There's a bunch of raven groups and people are always posting the raven that, the, you know, that they've raised and so on so yeah that's so cool that's so neat um so in your artist statement Catherine, you talk about um the philosophical number of 108 can you describe what that means and what that means to you well i went um in fact there's this there are 108 of these panels down below mm. um that is a whole series I did after we had a flash flood in Santa Fe. But um, I'm looking here. I don't know how to change this now. Now that we've, now that we've, oh, I know how to change it. So um, I, I first went a number of years to um, Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in Bhutan, there, and I'll talk a little bit about religion. So it, I was raised spiritually with go outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, um, I wasn't raised in any religion. And so outside was sort of my, the trees and the birds was, and what I saw was pretty much my religion. And I went with a friend who's an artist to Bhutan in the Himalayas and these circles in this um, piece, there's 108 of them, oops, we go back, uh, are basically, they were all over the wall. And I came back and my mom had Alzheimer's and I was having a difficult time with my father and helping him. And so I just tore 108 pieces of paper because uh, in Buddhism and, Hinduism is so on 108 is a very mathematically important number. It's nine by 12. And hmm. um, I, so it was like, okay, so what happens if you do something 108 times and you get to like 70, you get to 80 and you're like, oh my God, did I really decide I was going to do it? <laughs> and if you're just doing circles on the paper, if it's one thing, if you're doing 108, paintings in the series mm. it's something else um but i really got interested in in ritual and what 
man has really done before religion, after religion, in order to feel a part of the ground. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's you go to Japan and they wrap something around a tree. Um, you, you go to other places and there are stones stacked up. All of those things are marking place mm -hmm. and um, just saying, okay, I, you've been here, I've been here. It's, this is really an important um, place to be. And it can be anywhere. It can be your backyard. It can be um, on a walk when you have a special place. And so I came back and I started doing this, this series, um, which uh, this is a big one, same, same thing. And then it has, uh, it's a lot of ink work, which I do normally. And I use prayer flags. Let's not do that one. I brought home prayer flags uh, mm. and this all has salt. This piece has salt in it, uh, which okay. is, is a purifier. Mm. Um, this is um, a big painting that has uh, Japanese paper, but then on each one, I did 108 circles. Um, so it's the whole idea that you're, that you um, are doing, multiples that you sort of lose yourself but each time you do it you're doing mark making a different way well there's no repetition oh. but it's not always the same it's, it's not always the same and that's the whole idea behind hand you know you want your hand in it and mm -hmm. uh, this one has wire on it um so and then i got so i painted on top of it all so this is about the ice in Santa Fe because we have a stream. Um, so I, I did a whole, a whole bunch of paintings using wax um, like ice uh, and then the breakthrough. Um, okay. So I answered a bunch of your questions sort of all at the same time. But, um, <laughs> That's these, these are a little... Uh, wires because on my walk I kept finding wire on the street and so I started picking it up and I found and it's actually bailing wire and I would pick it up to get it out of the way of the tires but then I'd go home and find I'd made a circle <laughs> so it was part of that whole process I did a piece that was had 108 of these six by six squares and each one had a original handmade nail with wire a wire circle on it wow amazing yeah so that's that was sort of guy guy jai which is just means 108 um and uh now i see if i can get back there's the totem um which are four inches it's like 108 inches tall and it has all of those wires up and down and it's wide it's four and a half wide so um i'm trying to think now i am i'm looking at your next question <laughs> so between people and animals originally um i'm trying to get back to my the original but what did she say I'm trying to remember what my daughter told me to do. <laughs> so originally I did a lot of um, people and this is a series that um, the people are transforming into ravens uh, mm. that, and um, these were my original people. So the original people, and I call them shadow spirits were not male, not female. Um, cause I had a gallery, I brought in a male and a female figure and the gallery went, well, actually it, they said, well, we don't do women don't paint, <laughs> um, figured we don't want figurative art that you can tell the difference between male and female. And I said, that's fine. I'll just start doing spirits. So mm -hmm. that's what the, this whole shadow spirit sort of came, came out of that. Um, of not being able to tell whether it's male or female. It's just the spirit of the person. Um, 
I'm just going to pop in real quick for everyone that is watching. I did link um, Catherine's website to the chain right now. So if anyone wanted to follow along and look at her website, look at some of her artwork, it's available for you to view um, right now. So when COVID happened, I started, um, I've always done the, the five elements um, in in the Himalayas, there's always five elements and they consider earth and water and um, air and fire, but they add a top element of um, space of ether. And um, so I've, I was already sort of working in the elements anyway, but then I've done a couple shows where it's all five elements. But since COVID happened, I was doing a lot of ravens, but then all of a sudden I was into earth. And I think it's just because we all needed to be grounded. And so I've done a lot of stones uh, in that and I'm looking and they're in the elements. Um, so these are all um, linen on the background and a wrapped around panel because encaustic has to have a ground, a, a solid ground and I've gone to using linen and then I do wax and then I do a lot of oil um, oil stick on top and um, you ask what my favorite medium is and that's a hard thing but wax I mean even on the sculpture you have I start with wax so this is one of my vessels and it hasn't oh, been wow. cast it hasn't been cast yet um, but it's all it's all made in tur turkey wax and um, and then I can either cast them in glass or bronze. Uh, but the wax, this is like RNF, which is close to you guys, um, makes the wax color and you mix it with beeswax. And this mm. is one of the colors that I've made. I'm, I mix my own colors. And then on on top, I use a lot of our uh, oil stick, which RNF makes this. Um, it's a linseed oil and wax and a lot of pigment, and you can just you can just paint with it um, on top, and then you fuse it into the wax underneath with um, with a heat gun and or a torch, either one. So that's these new painting. There's a lot more. Uh, there's, there's a lot more uh, oil on top, mm. um, and uh, it's just much more intense and quick. Um, but you can see the earth, how the earth has sort of come into these. There's one that's stones, so. Um, where are we on the questions? <laughs> uh, I did have a quick question. Um, can you explain a little bit of what encaustic art pieces are for those who may not know? Um, well, encaustic means burning in. Um, so it was developed very early by the uh, Egyptians. You can sort of look it up, but it, um, it secures uh, pigment uh, with uh, the wax and it's pretty impervious to water. Uh, it's not impervious to very, very cold and very, very hot because it will melt or will freeze. Um, and now I've got oil stick all over my, I have a tendency to, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just when the dogs get into it that I'm really in trouble. And there's little faint <laughs> pop rats everywhere. Um, so, there's a lot, if it's a new medium for a lot of people and there's tons of different ways to use it. Um, and I, since I've been, I sort of taught myself, I had bees and I started using my own bees wax and RNF, oh, wow. RNF was kind enough to start their business. <laughs> it's celebrated 25 years, I think. Uh, and there now there's a bunch of different companies that um sell wax and some people make their own they take pigment put it with beeswax melt it with and with damar which is a resin so 
Um, it's, it's an interesting medium because you can build it up uh, really fast. And you sort of see in here the texture, the textures that you can build up, but you can also use it very transparent if you put just a little bit of color in and so on. Um, this is a partial of a very, what, a really big painting. Um, so it, it's just always fascinated me because I've loved oil paint and I like texture and you can build up texture, you can melt it so it's smooth or you can leave holes in texture and it's a very fast way of doing, doing texture. So, uh, yeah, this is a way for it. I do a lot of, um, is, these are some of the earth paintings. Um, I do also because I can't do such great big pieces anymore because the boards are heavy. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of multiples. Um, I'll do three, uh, three pieces together. This was a whole mountain series that actually got frozen. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but obviously I love color. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's beautiful. I think it's fun just to, to have like a, it's almost like a gallery showing right now going through your website kind of. Yeah, the through. website, there's a lot on it. I mean, I, since I was, 40 I'm I've done t over 2500 paintings so you it I, I'm pretty prolific and mm -hmm. um this one is called shift which is uh, another element series um because I work all the time I mean I you know I have a wonderful be so concept. inspired yeah 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 and and I think you know people I think the thing is, is there's in the repetition and um, like I've been making a bird's new bird screen for the show coming up next summer where I need 2308 inch panels. Oh, wow. So I'm sewing all of them together and um, they're all sewn in the feather stitch, which I think you can see. And um, oh, wow. And then they ha and then they hang, um, but they're the drawings of my birds on on a paper that doesn't tear, and then dipped in beeswax, and um, it gives me a lot of time. The sewing gives me a lot of time to. It's think so many about. different mediums kind of put together, having to do a sewing with beeswax and also yeah. the drawing and and everything all inclusive. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, you get to experiment with different. With different things in that regard then you can do yeah. yeah um so i think some questions i know we can see some of your pictures on your website but where can people go to see your paintings or sculptures um are you do you have any shows coming up anything like I, that i do it's sort of a busy busy year but um <laughs> uh uh las cruces art museum which is almost to the border in New Mexico, um, I have a full show called Illuminations, Crows and Ravens. And um, so I um, have been working on uh, in Santa Fe because the museum is so much larger. Um, I'm trying to remember, see if I can get to the birds on here. Um, oh, no, go away. Oh, I know. I keep forgetting you have to use the back. Um, so it's the first time I've done a whole show just on on the birds. Cool. And so this, so the bird screen that I had was only 11 of these panels. So uh, for this room, I'm doing 22 feet of the panels of the birds. And, and then I did I needed some bigger pieces of the birds. So these are the ones, these are all 40 by 40. So they're all gonna be in the show. And what they are, I use a lot of photography, which we haven't really talked about, but these are photographs of 
the sky in New Mexico, uh, some trees, no birds, and printed on Moab and Trotter paper uh, on a big Epson, and then glued down, and then all the birds are drawn with graphite. Oh, wow. And then I put wax on top and then color and then oil sticks. So it's a long process. It's um, uh, these were the little one. There were some little ones that I did that I went, okay, so those are only 10 inches by 10 inches. So I needed something bigger because the room's big. Um, this is a very large painting illumination. So this was done with all indigo wax first. Then on top of it, I put the white oil stick and then took away. So it's sort of done the opposite way you normally do painting and building it up. Mm. Um, it's um, taking away uh, color that I put on top. Uh, so I that's the colors that you have, you know, the black going into the white, there's a gray in yeah. the middle. And it's very, indigo is really cool because it's, it's on the wall it looks um, black, but if you mix white with it, suddenly this is the smaller one. Oh. Uh, there's a couple smaller ones. So that show, it's gonna be up from July 1st till uh, September 24th. And then I am working on, I don't have the dates yet, but um, with some people in Santa Fe, cause I have very few galleries left anymore. So I'm working with the, special project called Pi Projects in Santa Fe uh, to do a show. And um, that one will probably be sky and the two elements, sky and earth sort of opposite. Evan, um, are you saying that you are having limited galleries? Is that because of COVID? You're seeing a uh, Well, and COVID galleries. and galleries have just, my gallery I've been in, I was in Seattle for a long, long, long time. He moved and he does, I mean, you can see, he still shows some of my work on Saatchi and Artsy first and first dibs and so on. Um, but because my studios are so great, I tend to, I've gotten to the point. So now I'm, I'm selling more out of my studio. Um, when I have the work with the, the Pi Projects people in Santa Fe, um, basically they will, you know, I'll share, we'll do a 50, 50 cut and what they, mm -hmm. um, if they sell anything and then for usually three months or so on afterwards, they have rights to that. But I was in four different galleries in Santa Fe and for one reason or other, they all sort of changed and left and, mm -hmm. and so on. So galleries, you know, have had a hard time, but yeah. artists are sort of trying to figure out their way around it. Mm -hmm. um, doing more online and so on. Um, and then I have a show in uh, Kalispell next March in the Hockaday Museum. And that one is actually going to be more abstract lines and um, that sort of thing. So that's great. Uh, yeah. So it's one of those, I, you know, during COVID, it was like, okay, I'm just going to paint. And then it's been really nice because then it's all coming together. And I've actually been working with Artworks International out of Santa Fe and they've helped a lot. Get me in magazines and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, can people buy your art pieces or are you just showcasing? Yeah, I, you know, everything on the website, as far as I know, is still available. Mm -hmm. um, and um, prices, you know, you, what you have to do is just, I don't have prices on the website. So you just have to let me know what you're interested in and so on. And then we usually just send you pictures and prices and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. That's great. Um, Kevin, you've also, um, to add to another art form, you've also published a book. A couple. A couple of them. Can yeah. you share a little bit about that too? Um, so Unleashed was the first one I did. And at this, and we did 3,000 copies in Singapore. So I give those away. <laughs> and um, 
I did an alphabet show, animal alphabet show. And mm -hmm. so those are, the book is based on, on all of the animals and they were, um, it was about animal eyes and I did it with the Seattle Zoo and it was, okay. they were part of it. And it was about the connection between people and uh, animals is usually through visual. Mm. And then uh, I had worked with Radius Books on that, but they weren't, uh, the, des the designer um, did Unleashed and then started a nonprofit called Radius Books. And you apply, they only do um, 15 to 20 books a year. Um, and oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, and half of them are photographers, the other half are you know, artists, some of them mm. not alive. They've done a couple of Georgia O'Keeffe books and so on. Mm. They're, um, most of the books are printed in Verona and uh, David Chickie runs that. He's an amazing designer. And so I took on doing, I think we had nine chapters of 12 each. So it was 14 years of work. And, wow. Um, all based on, on 108 and um so that's no it was almost 300 pages by the time we took me a couple of years to do that wow so i'm sort of ready to do another one but i don't know there's a, <laughs> the book also has wonderful writing and poetry um of mine in it and um it's it's a it's basically like doing a retrospective book so mm. yeah what a labor of love for sure yeah. Years of work. yeah that's great and i do all my own photography of basically so for the book i had to i went share. to Bologna with yeah <laughs> share with us all. about your photography we didn't talk too much about well it. i didn't i mean i've always well i i've always had a camera but i um mm. my daughter who's working for me also is a photographer so um it just more and more I had to learn how to photograph my art mm. but then uh, more and more I use it as a basis of sort of what I'm what I'm doing although I don't run out and photograph um, ravens and <laughs> now the ravens are so ingrained in my head I can sort of draw them any way I want to draw them but um, I uh, have a whole series called Passages uh, mm. on my website, which um, started by uh, shooting with my iPhone uh, okay. out of the train from Paris to London on a gorgeous day. <laughs> wow. And everything was sort of moving in the foreground and mm. still in the background. And so then I did a whole series where I printed those, did paint on top. Mm. And um, yeah, did wax. The, the wax is great on top of um, the okay. photography if it's, you have to do a number of things first, but mm. yeah. I, I would never think to, you know, use a photograph and then put art or wax on top of it. <laughs> well, and there are a lot of photographers that have started doing that because- um, it's, an, it's an interesting way to manipulate the image. Yeah, sure. and um, if you just put wax on it, um, it's, um, I'm trying to see, see if I can go to this. Um, this is this is some of that series. If you just put wax on it, you have to spray it and so on. Otherwise the wax disturbs what's on your, pa on your paper. So I use mm -hmm. a fixative and spray it and then, um, always do just clear wax first so I can always get back to whatever the original photograph and then mm. I do a lot of oil stick with my fingers on top mm. um, so I punch everything up um, the triangles and houses and roads and this are all grooved into the wax and then the color put in oh, wow. um, but you can see there's some of them are sort of blurry um, but the blurriness is really what the series is about. This is one where I did 108 wow. Um, wow. of all my photographs starting in uh, Paris and ending up in London. 
Oh, wow. The but I shot, I shot like 350 photographs. I think I was really obnoxious in the train, but um, <laughs> I, it, was, it was really fun. It was great. So that sort of started a lot of the photography underneath. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you put it down and just totally ignore it, you know, just go from there. Um, but this one was sort of fun. <laughs> this is big. Taking these pictures, you know, just photographing the, the scene or were you thinking of creating this when you were taking these pictures? No, I just have always done multiples. And mm. so um, like I have a whole series from Myanmar um, where I did just the portraits of the Buddhas. And then I did a whole bunch of um, works. I have never shown them. And, and my trees, when I, do, when I do trees, I do multiple pictures um, and then print them and put them together. Um, let's see here. All right, so this piece is um, in a, shot out of the car, I think in Sri Lanka. Obviously we didn't talk about traveling, but I've done a lot of traveling. And I take my, I take my camera and I shoot both ways. Um, this is like multiple pictures I've put together and then wax on top. Uh, this is in uh, Africa. So you can see sort of the pieces. So I shot, I shot like 20, different photographs of the tree, mm. sort of going up the tree and sideways. And then um, it's, uh, I build up the whole picture with silk tissue. This is just mm -hmm. a photograph underneath uh, in Bhutan. And that's just a painting, but underneath each one of those is 108 squares. Wow. <laughs> So I ended up ignoring it and painting over it. So those are each 48 by 72. So they're big. Wow. Um, see what I've got in here. So this is a Northwest, no, this is a Santa Fe tree, but you can see how it's, uh, the photographs from the bottom all the way to the top and then put together. They're like pieced together like a puzzle. Yeah, all pieced so together cool. like a puzzle. So. Very cool. Yeah. Going back to traveling, um, do you have a favorite place you've visited or any place that you've been most inspired by? Well, we've traveled a lot to the east. Um, mm. And I've been to Bhutan three times. Wow. And, uh, so we just kept going. We, you know, I never, as a kid, never went anywhere except Mount Rainier and, the, you know, local mm. in Washington. But... Um, and then when we had the kids on the farm, I didn't have any money. So we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> we didn't go anywhere either. So when I finally, when the kids were gone to school um, and I uh, started traveling with my uh, second husband and he loves the, he loved, he'd been to India already three times before wow. I even met him. So um, that's, we've been to Japan, you know, and we, we go as travelers, not as, um, tourists. Mm. Uh, we've been to Peru. Af this is another African tree that um, I loved Africa. I'd love to go back. I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go at this point. <laughs> it's been interesting for everyone having to. Right. Travel restrictions are hard. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, this is another tall tree. My trees and my birds, I don't have very many. I don't have as many left. This is a little triptych where the printer didn't print properly for the left hand side. So it made it look like cells mm, okay. or things going through the um, things going through the branches. So sometimes mistakes are good things. You have to sort of be on the wa on the watch. This is down in a Bosque, which is south of Albuquerque hmm. um, and that you can see the wax sort of getting 
built up for the water. And I think I probably put all the birds in there. They weren't there originally. This one is in the show, going to come up in the show this summer, but it's uh, uh, 96 inches tall. So this one has the roots. Um, yeah, this is in Japan. So if I can't, you know, my husband sort of used to me if we travel, I'm like, stop the car. <laughs> <laughs> and the passages series came out of the fact that he didn't stop the car and I had to shoot out the window. <laughs> um, but um, if I see a tree, you know, traveling, I'll stop and I do the multiple uh, multiple images of it, so. That's great. So I think we're getting um, to the end of our yeah. discussion. Um, I'm gonna just make a note to anyone that's watching right now, if you want to ask a question, uh, now is kind of your last chance if you're watching. So make sure that you're typing in your questions um, on our Facebook page. Um, but Van, do you wanna ask our last question of the night if anyone else pops in we'll absolutely ask. all right absolutely so i guess to wrap everything up um miss skinner what would you recommend to someone who is interested in creating eco art projects um in the future that combine art and nature um well i guess i would recommend they have to be outside with their feet on the ground and <laughs> um and i think the other thing that i learned early on when I was illustrating is um, try to narrow your focus in the beginning a little bit, um, whether you're interested in mosses or lichens or whole trees. But if you, if it can be daunting, especially if you're not trained in biology and you were talking mm. Dan about, um, you know, concentrating on the birds and, and there's, I mean, these days the internet is amazing you can come back in and look just about anything up mm -hmm. or you can take your phone and look any plant up mm -hmm. and i mean i was lucky as a child when that my father taught me names and my mother my they were both like to fish and be out and we didn't do tons of tons of hiking but we were out mm. and um they taught me the names of things and um, so that's something like with my grandchildren is, you know, what's the name of this plant? It, even you don't have to know the Latin names, you just the common names of things, but because that's a good way of remembering what, what you've seen and you start getting interested in something and then, um, then you have to figure out what, I mean, I think you can go online and see if, uh, a lot of um, eco art, but basically it's somebody that is spending time outside. Yeah, in we it. actually did have a question come in from the uh, comments and I kind of just related to what you just said, just um, do you try to convey that respect for nature in your work? Yeah. Obviously as you're um, utilizing that as your inspiration to make sure that respecting it yeah. is also part of it as well as important. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, I think one of my favorite pieces, which I don't know if I even have it on, and we, on our walks, we gathered uh, 108 sticks, and then I tied them in with wire and put them on the panel all the way down. And um, I also have 108 stones that are covered in red wax. I mean, I think people bring things back it's mm -hmm. always fun if you have one place, whether it's your front porch or it doesn't have to be an altar, but it's a place where you can bring things back with you and look at them, mm. look at them closer. Not that you're supposed to bring a lot of stuff back from certain places, but <laughs> yeah. That sounds very scientific of you though, like an observation, you know, observation. A, very science, a very science related yeah. um, connection yeah. there. Yeah. Um, to look things over. That's very cool. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions come in right now. Um, but if there are any that we happen to see come in, you know, um, we might send okay. you an email and ask. 
Okay. But, um, and my books are you, my um, 108 book. You can go on my website on the great. first page and we just mail that. And then we put one of the other ones in with it. So great. Great. So um, the website is linked in our comments here. If anyone does want to check out uh, those, you can take a look through and see all the pictures that we uh, had shown tonight. That'll be great. Um, so I think we're going to sign off for tonight. It's still early where you are out in uh, Seattle, but uh, getting to see that eight o'clock. Not quite dark, dark yet, excuse me. But <laughs> yeah. thank you everyone for, for uh, listening and for coming. It was really fun. All right. All right. Thank you all and have a great night. We'll see you for our next uh, Meet the Eco Artist series. Okay. Thanks.